The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Good day, I'm Elena Rusk. Local high school officials will meet tonight to discuss one of the most concerning issues on our campuses, fentanyl. The issue came to light about two weeks ago when several students overdosed on opioids at North High School and North's principal confirmed fentanyl was on campus. But the issue is not just limited to that school. 17 News has learned Narcan, the overdose reversal nose spray, has been used at least five times at high schools across Kern County over the past month and a half. Kern High board members have a meeting tonight that they are set to discuss these recent issues. That meeting begins at 7 p.m. And a reminder, you can find more of our comprehensive coverage on the fentanyl crisis in Kern County, including 17's Robert Price's award-winning in-depth series, Fentanyl, the Counterfeit Killer, on our website, kget.com. A police standoff that began in South Bakersfield yesterday ended in a peaceful surrender. Neighbors tell 17 News police started arriving about 4 p.m. yesterday and surrounded a house on Bora Bora Lane. The Bakersfield Police Department has identified the suspect in this standoff as 25-year-old Kevin Olivares, a parolee who is being monitored after serving time for assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer. After negotiations, officers say Olivares surrendered peacefully a few hours later at 8.40 p.m. He has been arrested on charges of making criminal threats, resisting arrest, and violating his parole. Now to our court watch, an attached bee woman charged with the murder of her ex-husband will finally face a jury this week. Back in June of 2019, Wendy Howard told police she shot 57-year-old Kelly Pitts in self-defense during an argument over his alleged molestation of her teenage daughter. Howard is charged with first-degree murder and faces up to 50 years to life in prison if convicted. Defense attorney Tony Lidget and prosecutor Eric Smith have both said the trial could last about 20 days. Opening statements are expected to begin tomorrow morning, and we'll be following this case closely. And making news around town, it's rideshare week. That means if you can catch a public transit, tra transit to work or if you can carpool any way that you can cut down on greenhouse gas emissions, you're encouraged to do it. You can pledge to, commu to uh, commute at commutekern.org. Organizers say sharing a ride or riding your bike or simply walking, a great way to save money, save time, go green, and get healthy. Now, if you do do this, you can enter to win a bike from Snyder's Cyclery. We have all that information on our website, too. All right, now to our statewide drought. Winter isn't exactly around the corner, but already scientists are looking at whether we could get enough snow to escape this exceptional drought. Researchers at UC Berkeley's Central Sierra Snow Lab say due to the multi-year drought, we would need to record 150 to 175 percent of our average annual precipitation this winter. That equates to about 60 feet of snowfall. Scientists say, well, it's not impossible. It's highly unlikely, seeing as the snow lab records about half of that with an average of 36 feet a year. Well, 17 News is your local election headquarters. We are just 36 days away from November's midterm election, and we continue to cover one of the most consequential issues voters in unincorporated Kern will see on their ballots this year, Measure K. The measure proposes a one-cent sales tax increase to go toward improving public safety and vital services, similar to Measure N passed by voters in the city of Bakersfield in 2018. The county's sales tax is currently 7.25%, the lowest in the state. If Measure K passes, it would cost consumers an extra penny for every dollar they spend in unincorporated parts of the county. Kern County's Chief Administrator Ryan Alsop said most of the sales tax revenue in these unincorporated areas are business-to-business -business transaction and the tax increase would not apply to food and bottled water. Alsop says the revenue generated from Measure K is estimated to be about $50 million annually and would fund law enforcement and public services like roads and libraries. Now, the last two community education workshops about Measure K are happening this week. County officials holding a public discussion on the proposed one cent sales tax increase at 6 p.m. tonight at Rosedale Bible Church. The final meeting will happen at 6 p.m. tomorrow night at the Bakersfield Country Club. You can also learn more on our website, kgat.com. Hello, this is Tim Callahan with Clinica Sierra Vista, and we're excited to unveil the Community Health Center of the Future, our comprehensive care center. It's located right across the street from Memorial Hospital. We have every service under one roof, from family medicine, OBGYN care, dental services for adults and children, behavioral health, and much more. 
So find your way to better care at Clinica Sierra Vista this year at our comprehensive care center. Visit our website, clinicasierravista.org, for the latest on this project. We'll see you soon. Now, another state news, a helicopter crashed in a Fresno neighborhood this weekend, and people, the officials say that everyone involved was very lucky to come out okay. The chopper went down Saturday morning in Fresno. Police saying when they arrived, the pilot was laying on the ground and a passenger was walking around. Neither was seriously hurt. They were taken to the hospital for observation. They say the two told officers they were on a test flight when they heard a popping sound and started to lose altitude. The helicopter narrowly missed two homes and investigators say no one on the ground was hurt. Some financial relief is coming soon for Californians feeling the pinch from inflation. The state will begin sending out relief payments on October 7th. So just a few days now coming up on Friday. To qualify, you must have filed your 2020 taxes by last October of 2021. The amount you get will depend on how much you make. Individuals making up to $75,000 will get the maximum amount of $350. Couples who earn up to $150,000 will get $700, and people with dependents will get an additional $350. The state says 90% of the payments will be made before the end of next month. And the Supreme Court now opening their nine-month term today with the newest Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson on the board. Now, nominated by President Joe Biden, of course, Jackson was sworn into the office over the summer, becoming the first black woman to serve on the high court. She replaces fellow liberal Justice Stephen Breyer, who retired in June, and she now makes up one of three liberals on the nine-justice court. Today's opening session began with oral arguments and a conservative challenge to the federal government's authority to regulate wetlands under a landmark environmental protection law. Today's oral argument also marks the first time in history that four women justices will sit together on the bench. Now let's switch gears a bit to the coronavirus as health officials are keeping a close eye on a possible new variant of the covert coronavirus that could cause trouble this fall and winter. Experts say it's too early to know if the variants will spread as widely as the highly infectious Delta and Omicron variants. But White House medical advisor Anthony Fauci said one of the new variants, BA2752, looks, quote, suspicious. His concern is that current vaccines will not recognize the variant and ward off infection. Now here at home this weekend, American Fabrication on Rosedale Highway will unveil its latest addition to their COVID-19 memorial, displaying some of the names of people in Kern County who died from COVID-19. 507 names are already on the wall. This Saturday, the company will update the display with 58 more names. The company says they'll continue to add more to this memorial, and you can submit the name of a loved one by emailing mjlbettis at gmail.com. Making news around the nation, coastal flood warnings and high wind advisories are in effect along the Jersey Shore as the remnants of Hurricane Ian merge into a strengthening coastal storm. Widespread coastal flooding could be seen this morning, hours ahead of high tide, which is expected to cause several road closures and possible travel disruptions today and tomorrow. Localized wind damage is also expected today. The National Weather Service has issued storm warnings and high surf advisories for New Jersey and Delaware beaches, urging people not to go swimming or boating because of this storm. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.